Craniotomy for subdural hematoma appears deceptively simple and one of the first operations taught to neurosurgeons in training during residency. However, it is also associated with relatively high mortality and morbidity and therefore very important to master and treat with most care and caution. The key principles to follow here are cauterized branches of middle meningeal artery supplying dura at the onset. Avoid any direct contact between the surgical instruments and friable brain. Hold bipolar in an angled manner to avoid simultaneous proximity of both tips to the brain resulting in thermal and electrical injury. Use irrigation for hydrodissection, bipolar for clot morselization, and gentle suction to retrieve formed clots. Avoid mechanical membrane stripping. Instead, cauterize its borders with dura and gently remove the rest. This is a case of a 72-year-old lady who presented with an episode of expressive aphasia for about an hour. She had a small head injury while gardening over a week prior to presentation. CT scan of her brain showed a large holohemispheric subdural hematoma on the left side, resulting in 12 millimeter midline shift. Her neurological status rapidly deteriorated while being monitored in ICU with aphasia and right-sided weakness. She was taken to the operating room for surgical evacuation of this hematoma. In the operating room, she was positioned supine with shoulder roll under her left shoulder and head turned to the right and slightly elevated for improved venous drainage and brain relaxation. After making a large curvilinear incision, a relatively large bone flap was elevated over the left frontoparietal region. Bipolar cautery was used to cauterize the branches of middle meningeal artery. Tack-up sutures were used at the edges of the exposed dura. Dura was opened sharply, exposing the large encapsulated and formed subdural hematoma. Large volume irrigation along the plane between the hematoma and brain with mild suction and bipolar cautery was used in gentle separation of this large clot from the brain patiently. Large volume irrigation parallel to the plane bordering the clot and brain is gently used to separate them. Suction is used gently for clot retrieval. While you're watching this gentle and patient process, other noteworthy points, head initially is turned and raised slightly to improve venous drainage, resulting in brain relaxation with surgical field flat during initial clot retrieval from the surface of the brain. Then the head of the bed is raised for clot removal from the floor of the skull. Lastly, with the brain relaxed, Head of the bed is lowered and the clot at the vertex near the superior sagittal sinus is removed.
Please note that the edges of the cloth are never pulled or tugged on impatiently. Instead, bipolar is used to morselize the exposed edges. Here, with the aid of surgical assistant irrigating, hydrodissection, bipolar morselization, and suction are carried on simultaneously to retrieve clots. Bipolar is mostly held in an angle to avoid both tips touching the brain. After removal of the clot, a cortical blood vessel was found to be hemorrhaging into the subdural space. This blood vessel may very well be supplying sensory motor cortex and therefore should be repaired gently and carefully. The side wall of this vessel was carefully sealed with low current bipolar cautery with the artery remaining patent. Head of the bed is elevated and the remaining formed clot is carefully removed from the floor of the skull with the border where the subdural hematoma membrane meets the dura, carefully bipolar coagulated. This border is a common site of recurrent subdural hematoma and should be dealt with care. Bed is then rotated on each side and additional clot removed similarly from anterior cranial fossa and occipital region with the borders cauterized. Bipolar is turned and held against dura, cauterizing the edges of the membrane. Prior to this, 
direct visualization of this area is necessary to avoid inadvertent injury to unseen bridging vessels that need to be dealt with. Angled view endoscope is quite useful here. With most of the hematoma removed and brain relatively relaxed, the head is tilted down and blood adjacent to the superior sagittal sinus is carefully removed. Bipolar cautery is used with caution here to avoid injury or causing thrombosis of superior sagittal sinus. Wet cotinoid patties are used to protect the brain in form of a barrier between brain and surgical instruments where contact is inevitable. They are gently placed over and not dragged on the brain. They spread the force of instruments resulting in less pressure on brain during retractions. It is important to remove all the blood clot to prevent an osmotic gradient causing further accumulation of fluid in subdural space in the future. At this point, a bolus of half-normal saline is given to the patient intravenously to increase cerebral blood flow and aid brain in regaining its normal volume and therefore lessening the subdural space.
By now, the brain has regained most of its volume and the dead space in subdural area is minimized. Head of the bed is brought back up again. Papaverin soaked gel foam is placed over the repaired cortical artery to prevent vasospasm and injury to sensory motor cortex. A drain is then gently placed in dependent area of subdural space. Bone flap is reapproximated in a standard fashion. I usually keep the patient flat postoperatively with a drain in place and raise the head of the bed gradually daily. The drain is removed and patient mobilized out of bed on post-op day 3. Postoperative CT scan showed complete removal of the hematoma with no complication. Most importantly, she returned to completely normal function and was discharged home. Well, how are you doing? I am doing just great. I had a wonderful surgeon, so obviously, I, I ran into a tree limb, I could not speak, this was nine days later, remember, it doesn't happen right away, and came into the hospital, Dr. Lima Madi took care of me right from the beginning, got me in ICU, and um, had a long four-hour surgery, but I made it through, obviously, one rough day afterwards, so I was told, I don't remember it, but I woke up on the next day, and I'm just like I am now, talking too much, but anyway, he, it was wonderful. No, not talking enough, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> anyway, Always um, good it's, to hear you. It's, it's the best thing about it, and this will probably be cut, mm -hmm. was I never had that terrible feeling, even when I was out of it and I was non-responsive, my eyes are open, but I don't really remember it, um, is that I didn't feel frustrated. I didn't think I'm in this body and I, I can't express myself. And I, it, I wasn't frustrated. It was just nice. I mean, you know, I opened my eyes and I saw a nurse. I remember that, but I think she was talking to me, but I sure didn't, didn't uh, what do I say, process it as I should have. And now everything is well, and I'm going to slow down. No, so no, you and had... I drink water. I drink lots and lots of water. Good. You had global aphasia, which means you couldn't process words nor could you express yourself because right. of it. But thank God, that's completely gone. Basically. Well, obviously, it is, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Excellent. That was what I had. So right. thank you. Of course.